Hi, this is Andy Eastwood welcoming you to the Octopus Ukulele Academy. If you're lucky enough to have acquired one of the Octopus Rosette model ukuleles, you'll see on the packaging that it came in, there are some chords printed under the heading Six Essential Chords to Get You Started. Well, as the Octopus resident ukulele tutor, it was I who suggested these chords, so I think it would be a very good idea for me to talk you through them. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. Now, a lot of ukulele teachers would probably start you off with two or three chords, and it's well known that you can play hundreds of simple songs with just three chords, but I like my students to be a little more ambitious, so I'm going to throw you in at the deep end with six chords. <laughs> of course, that swimming analogy, throw you in at the deep end, is a bit over dramatic. It implies some kind of danger. Well, unlike swimming, the hobby of ukulele playing involves no danger whatsoever. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You play a wrong note. So what? No one gets hurt. So let's jump in head first. Now, you won't master all these chords immediately. It will take a while. So I suggest you keep coming back to this video and working through it until the information gradually sinks in. So here's the first chord shown on the rosette ukulele box and it's C, which is made by stopping the A string at the third fret. Now, if you're staring at the chord diagrams on the box in blank bewilderment, I must point out that I have already made a video earlier in the series explaining thoroughly how to read ukulele chord diagrams. So if you're confused, I suggest you watch that video first before we carry on. The first question that's going to spring to mind when approaching this or any other chord for the first time is, which finger do I use? I could use any of them. Let's introduce a very useful principle right away that you'll find helpful as you learn chords. Use the first or index finger for notes on the first fret, the second or middle finger for notes on the second fret, the third or ring finger for notes on the third fret, and the fourth or little finger for notes on the fourth fret. Now you can't always stick to this rule, there will be occasions when you have to break it as you'll find later on, but for now, if we don't have to break it, let's stick to it and you'll find that doing so will help to minimise the amount of hand movement between one chord and another. And as time goes by, and your playing becomes more complex, and the tempo gets faster, you'll be very glad that you got into this good habit early on. So this C chord is going to be played with the third finger. The next question, of course, is how do I press my finger onto the string? Well, the basic shape of the fingers when you form your chords should be pretty much like that. Each finger is in three sections and those three parts should, roughly speaking, form the three sides of a square. So what I mean is that basically there should be a straight line from the elbow along the back of the hand and up the first joint of the finger and then the middle portion of the finger should be at about 90 degrees to that and then the top joint of the finger makes another right angle with that, roughly speaking that is, it won't be exactly a right angle but that's a good way to think of it because that means then that the top joint of the finger is pointing back towards you or in other words the fingertips are being pulled directly onto the string as you pull back with your arm. And that's how you get the necessary pressure on the strings, you pull back with the arm as if moving your elbow towards the wall behind you. This way the biggest muscles in the arm do all the work and the fingers don't have to squeeze or press. All the finger muscles have to do is get the fingertips to the right position on the fingerboard. When you pull back with that left arm, make sure that you're counteracting that pressure with equal pressure from the right arm at the other end of the uke. Otherwise the uke will slip round like this. You have to balance the pressure at both ends. So get that finger in place behind the third fret and there you have your first chord, C. Now there's one more thing I'd like to mention before we go any further and that is what angle of rotation should your left hand and arm be at? A lot of beginners get into the bad habit of playing with the back of their hand facing down towards the floor, but that isn't particularly comfortable. So start with your hand and arm in a totally relaxed resting position, hanging down by your side. Now bend the elbow to raise the hand. The back of the hand is at right angles to the floor. That's its natural position. Now you won't be able to reach the notes like that, but you don't have to turn it right round, just go halfway so that it's at 45 degrees-ish to the floor. That will be a lot more comfortable and you'll have the added bonus that the neck of the uke will rest on this finger, which will help to keep it steady. There will be some chords where we have to switch to this angle, as you'll see shortly, but most of the time this is the kind of angle you want to be at. 
The exact position is always going to depend on which chord you're trying to reach. But the most important rule is it should be comfortable and as relaxed as possible. OK, let's try the next chord, C7. And it's going to be every bit as easy as the C we just played. Again, this chord is formed by placing one finger on the A string. And this time we're stopping the string at the first fret. So remember the rules. First fret, first finger. Remember the shape of the finger. Remember the angle of the hand. Pull back to get the pressure. And there it is. C7. Now, having learned two chords, it would be a very good idea to practice changing from one to the other and back again. And that will help to get you used to a very useful skill that you'll depend on to play practically any musical instrument. And that is the art of putting one finger down as you lift another one up. And you can spend many happy hours practicing that until it becomes second nature. Now let's have a go at F. For this chord, we need two fingers. The first finger stops the E string at the first fret. and The second finger stops the G string at the second fret. Now it's going to become clear just how important that square finger shape I talked about really is. Because not only does it make the fingertips point back towards you as you pull them onto the strings, but it also allows the fingers to bridge over the other strings that they aren't supposed to be touching. As you try this chord, you'll notice that you have to be careful that the first finger doesn't catch either the A or the C string, and that the second finger has to bridge right over the other three strings to reach the G string. So it's essential that you keep this kind of finger shape rather than letting the fingers flatten out. Another important point you need to become aware of now is that both fingers have to move simultaneously. The first time you find the chord shape, you'll probably put them down one after the other, as I just demonstrated. But it's very important that you don't let this become a habit. Chord changes have to be instantaneous. When you're playing, there isn't going to be time to move the fingers individually. So as soon as you've found the finger position, practice lifting both fingers off together and putting them back on together. And this is a good way to practice finding any chord you learn. Now let's play A minor. Minor chords are the ones that sound a little bit sad. This should be pretty easy because we've just played F and as you can see from the diagram, the second finger is in exactly the same place it was for the F chord. So all we have to do is pop that finger down and forget about the first finger. Or if you're playing through these chords in sequence, after your F, you would just lift up the first finger and leave the second one where it is. In fact, that leads us to another very useful technique you'll need to practice. Moving one finger while leaving another one in place. So, form your F chord and then lift the index finger off to make A minor and put it back again. And alternate between those two chords, F and A minor, without moving that middle finger. Now here's a chord with a difference, a bar chord. Remember when I said there would be some chords that called for a different hand position? Well, this is one of them. As you can see from the diagram, three of the strings are going to be stopped at the second fret. Well, we're not going to use three different fingers. We're going to use one finger laid flat across all the strings, and this is called a bar. Now, if the same finger is going to press all those strings down behind the same fret, that means that the fingers now need to be parallel with the frets. So your hand angle is going to come round so that the back of the hand is facing the floor. And that familiar square finger shape that we talked about earlier is not going to work for this chord. You need the finger to lie flat. So now you're going to have to bend the finger at this joint, but not at this one. So get your hand angled round so that the back of the hand faces the floor and put the third finger on the A string as if playing a C chord there at the third fret and put your second finger flat across all the strings at the second fret. Now, I know what you're thinking. The diagram shows three strings stopped at the second fret and I've just told you to put that second finger across all the strings. Well, that's because it's easier to just put the finger flat down across all the strings than it is to worry about touching three and missing the other one. And it makes no difference to the note we hear because the note on the A string is defined by this third finger here on the fret above. So keep it simple and bar all four strings. And there's your D7.
There's one more essential chord that I'd like to share with you in this video, and that's G7. Now for the first time, we're going to use three fingers. The first finger goes on the E string in the same place it went when we played the F chord. Then we need to stop both the C and A strings at the second fret. So the rule we introduced earlier of assigning one finger per fret isn't going to work here. We put the second finger on the C string and the third finger on the A string. Make sure you don't do them the other way around because that's much less neat and more effort and the fingers would have to cross over one another. They must be this way. Now, if you've been working through these chords in order and you've just been playing D7, remember to go back to the old hand angle for this one. We don't want the fingers parallel to the frets anymore. That's just for bar chords, OK? Now we go back to the old position. So your fingers are now at about 45 degrees to the frets and to the strings. That means it's easy for the second and third fingertips both to find their positions behind the second fret. And there is your G7. So we've learned six very important chords that no player can be without. And as you get more into your playing, you'll see just how essential they really are because you'll call upon them time and time again. As well as playing through them in the order that I've introduced them here, be sure to play through them in different sequences until you get used to finding them easily and until your fingers can hit those positions accurately every time, no matter which chords you're changing to and from. Now, this video may have only been a few minutes long, but if you're coming to this as a beginner, which you very likely are, there's enough here to keep you busy for many days and perhaps many, many weeks of practice. But when you get used to effortlessly changing between these six chords, you'll have learned the basis of many, many songs to play, and you'll have picked up some technical principles that'll help you to learn your next six chords, and in time, your next 60. So have fun.